So for the full body workout, you might want space. There are yoga mats if people, there's going to be some kneeling or some on the floor. Some of you will be maybe fine. There's slant boards for some of the squat stuff if it feels better on your ankles. Really important that this is not about um, pushing through pain or overstretching yourself. You're not really trying to fight any twists or any. Go real slow, real gentle, just about getting warmth and, and blood flow and honoring where your body is at today, how it feels today. Um, and not, yeah, not chasing range or anything like that. Purely like, we're not, yeah, don't push into any pain. Focus on your breath. I'm gonna be talking, so I probably won't be able to sync it as much, but if you're in your own space listening, like there's often some of the exercises that you just be breathing normal and some of them you can really sync your breath with the in and out of whatever's happening. Yeah, if you ever feel really good in a position and you wanna stay there and we're moving on, feel free to stay. Like, don't feel like you have to keep up. If something feels really nice to your body and it wants you to stay, and if it wants you to yawn or make a noise, let that happen. Like it's called pendiculation, where which is like what cats do when they, you know, stretch when animals stretch. It's called pendiculation. So let your body do that if it if it comes up naturally. You might feel a little bit nauseous. I don't think everyone will, but sometimes when you start flushing out corners of the body with these different movements, it can stir up some whether it's toxic toxins. I don't really know, but sometimes I've done this and felt a little bit nauseous during it or, or after it. I've never been sick or anything, but just especially when you've not gone to like a corner of your body for a while, it can stir some stuff up that, that kind of can do that. That's my take on it anyway. It's purely really about good blood flow around all the joints and muscles of the body and a bit of mind muscle connection as well. So it's a bit of, we'll, we'll do some of that mixed in, some maxic stuff mixed in. But we'll start with just a little bit of breathing just to get locked in. Um, feel free to sit on a ball, sit on a little prop or sit on the floor if you're comfortable cro le cross-legged. Um, just going to do a couple minutes of alternate nostril breathing. So just to get us locked in with each lung. Take your thumb and your kind of fourth finger. And we'll start inhale on the left nostril. Big inhale. And then you close it and exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close it, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. And as you do this, you can really move your neck and your chest as you inhale through the right. Imagine you're like taking a really nice whiff of some beautiful flowers. Like you wanna get that deep in. I think we often try to keep our head neutral and the spine neutral but I can get a much deeper smell if I really go for it. And then close the right, exhale through the left. And the same thing on the left, deep in through the left. And you can close the left, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right, allowing the spine to move you. Right up to the tip and then exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close the left, exhale through the right. Relax with the exhale. Big, turn your head to the right, big inhale from the right nostril. Spiraling up. Exhale through the left. If you need to blow your nose, if you've got tissue, blow it in your hand, blow it on your sleeve, whatever helps. Inhale through the left. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Exhale through the left. All right, last full cycle. Inhale through the left. Big one. Get it deep in your lungs. Close the left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close it, exhale left. And back to normal breathing. Take a few deep in through the nostril, both nostrils. Hmm. So I just like to add that 
bit of turn. I feel like you can, with the spiraling in the, the air, I don't know, it just goes into the lungs a bit deeper, I find. Next, we're going to do a bit of um, Nauli. Like, I'm not an expert with Nauli, but it's essentially the vacuum in your stomach. I think it's good to lock that in before we move as well. So, uh, I think you can do it sitting. Some people might want to stand. Yeah, maybe we want to stand for it. So, you're going to inhale, and then you exhale fully, and then you have to kind of allow the stomach to pull in by itself. Some of you might be able to do it. It's kind of an exploration if you've never done it, but you want to create this sort of vacuum feeling that's kind of putting nice pressure on the organs, really helps to massage the organs. So I'm going to try and demo it, but inhale deeply, and then exhale. So you want to find that kind of natural, I'm not like trying to suck in, but you have to do a little bit of suck in and then it kind of naturally just like seals over like cellophane or something. And then I really like to explore the different angles. You just want to search. It should feel like nice massage and find the angles, moving the hips, moving the ribs that feel kind of good on, on the kind of the organs and inside the stomach. So do a couple more short rounds of that. Inhale through the mouth or the nose. Big exhale. Five, ten seconds is good. Anyone struggling with that? Yeah? Anyone got any cat? I feel like you've done that. Any Yeah. Any tips? What would you, how would you teach that? Mm. Yeah, it's it's kind of like you exhale, kind of fold forward. And you do have to pull in a little bit and then it kind of like sucks right up by itself um, but you found it a little bit? yeah yeah so you have to kind of fold forward will help and we'll just do one more round of that just to get locked in you can't you do kind of like pull the stomach a bit but then you feel it almost invert like a vacuum so you kind of suck in once you don't yeah Yeah. It does it like that. Nice. Cool. All right. Final round then. Inhale. Exhale. Nice one. Cool. So from now on, um, if you know uh, ocean breath, which is in and out through the nose, deep, following the back of the throat, you can lock into that. What's it called? Ujjayi breath. Ujjayi breath, yeah. If you know that, do that. Otherwise, deep nose breathing, or what feels good for the body. You don't need to force any, any specific breath work. Um, and then first off, I'm just going to start with some shaking, right? So right wrist, shake the wrist out. All good, yep. And you can move on the spot, fidget, whatever it is, but just shaking that wrist out. And you want to do some like hello, goodbyes, and some hot. What was that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you can, if you sink down, if you if you kind of coil on that side, you get more slap for the wrist to move a bit better. So we can set the tension with the torso. And if it doesn't look weird, you're not doing it right, I don't think. Like if you wouldn't feel weird at the gym doing this. <laughs> it's like this. Yeah. All right, change hands. Yeah. 
Got the sides. Some up downs. Okay, and the legs, right leg. Shaking it out to the front, to the side. If it needs to go back a touch, it can go back as well as down. And a bit behind as well. It changes how it shakes. That gets the hamstrings a bit more. Yeah, and sticks as well. If people want balance, this isn't about force and balance. You've got sticks on the outside. You can use it for balance. Use a rope. Use the wall. Completely fine. Right, some side to sides at the front. <coughs> okay, change leg. Already I feel that stirring stuff up, right? Like, uh, bit to the side. Try and feel it in your hamstring as you shake it. Hamstring nice and relaxed. Some slack there, and you can kind of shake it up. Some side to side. Okay. All right, nice. Shake arms and legs, left couple reps. Okay, final part of that, of the shake series. Torso, like a dog, trying to shake the water off. Do the focus on the shoulders. Nice, relax with the arms. And then hips. Both together, or whatever comes naturally. Harlem shake, Harlem shake. <laughs> Somewhere in there is the Harlem shake. Okay. Um, on to, let's just do that there. Where's the microphone part of it? There we go, do that. Okay, on to, feel free to go shirtless or minimal if you want as well. Um, flex series. So we're gonna go through, gently flex almost every muscle in the body. Start with the biceps. So we're not flexing, we're just trying to gently coax on and off, connect to the bicep. So right bicep firm. The more you bring that hand into the shoulder, the more Slap, you'll be able to activate as hard as the bicep there. So you bring it in, you can go behind your head. If you can get to even more connection to the bicep. But wherever it's for you, we're just going flex, relax, flex, relax. And I'm not trying to flex the forearm, I'm not squeezing everything. It's trying to focus just precisely on the bicep. So you can straighten it out and then back a couple more times. Go for the left bicep. Just trying to get a bit of my muscle connection, a bit of blood flow just saying, hello, I'm over there. I'm aware of you, I can connect to you, send some blood flow to you. Good, straight leg to it, shake it a couple more times, and then just go right, left, right, left, side to side. Nice, right, onto the tricep. Go for tricep, screen, whatever works for you, you can focus you one of them, but that helps you connect with the tricep. You want to explore angles, right? So it's kind of connecting the bit right here, trying to stop the weight going for this stuff. If you pull across, you tend to the tricep. Explore it. Might want to cramp, just get to the edge. If you want to cramp, always try to go just to the edge of cramp. Don't push into it, but just find the edge of it. Top thighs, left tricep. Whatever that is for you, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're just trying to get some tricep engagement. Yeah. Deep, 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 
Mini. Cool. Yeah. Spin that out. Then go back and forth a couple of times just to finish. Left, right. Left, right. From here we'll go shoulders, so maybe, maybe out. So trying to lift until I get the nice bits weight up from the shoulders. So lift out. Yeah. And then you can start to do front out. Kind of like to pull it up, but try to focus on just the muscle and not everything else doing all that right. And then come around to the back. Change the other side. Just use a couple of bit of the front. Just out. Just put the side where the kind of stimulate that for you. Get the back. Kind of get the elbow hand back to the side. And just triceps in there as well. Lift it all up. Alright. On to the traps. This is one that took me a bit of practice to get, but trying to do it together. If you've got hunches in your neck, it's okay. That the goal is to do it without hunching. But both kind of similarly swap side to side. Yeah, so this one takes might take a bit of practice if you've never done it. Just use the mirror. And try to like, squeeze your neck into your traps. Okay, on the chest, squeeze the arm across. Use your hand if you want to check that it's on. And crack, kind of take that and squeeze. Kind of, we'll go through both at the same time here in your own time, just alternating. And push the forms together. We're doing this, this pulsing action, so with our hip, like activating as far across as we can. We want it to kind of flock around it a little bit. And other muscles are going to be involved in the beginning. The goal kind of is to be able to choose a muscle and only activate that muscle and everything else collapses. But in the beginning, there's, we've got all sorts of compensation patterns and things are going to kick in as well. <coughs> okay, onto forearms, pull in, wrist up, whatever it is for you, take in, do up, put in. And again, I don't mind alternating here, it's even nice to like set it to go and let it relax and lift the other side. And then two positions here, down and then pulling the wrist towards the hand. And here you can explore fingers as well. You know, it's fingers open makes it a lot harder. Close the fingers, you can get a bit deeper. And I do find the more you focus on one at a time, the more beneficial it is than always doing two, but alternating, I don't mind, rather than like two together, it's like swap sides. Swap this little dance between these neural pathways. And then we'll just go hands while we're here. Pull the fingers up as much as we can. And then if you relax the fingers, you can get deeper with the wrist. So it's that fight between pulling the hands up with the fingers up or relaxing the fingers and pulling the hands up. So fight between those two. So knuckles, fingers, knuckles, fingers. Pull in. And then the opposite way, just squeeze some fists, normal fists, wet fists, if you've got a wet fist. Maybe we'll show you that scenario instead of wet this. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Right, shake that out. Um, can do stomach. So, trying to get the top of the pack. For me, it's kind of, yeah, not that perfect for the isolation of that, but the more you kind of like sink 
to show them into this area and you find it easy if I do go side to side with it. Well, and slowly like, it's like we're kneading meat here, right? Working down to the stomach. Cause some lift. Feels a little bit easier to get blood on. Just kind of like allowing the lower back to fold over. And it helps with the breath muscles. Tina isn't around the belly button. It's all about just exploring. We're just trying to activate every inch of that nice big rectangle in the stomach. So you get low into the pubic bone region and you really kind of fold over. If you allow the leg to relax in the hips, it might help as well. And then into the abdominals a little bit, so kind of like side body, 45 degrees here. Yeah, you can go, you can go side back there as well, working around there. And then from there, we're going to go into the, take a deep breath, I guess, big through the nose. And again. Okay, make sure we've got nice afternoon over the blood. And we've got to go to lats, so this kind of coiling action, elbow to back pocket. From here we start to go into the spine, so the rhomboid is kind of middle of the back, so whatever opens the chest up nicely. And just kneading, knee, we're just kneading around, so the arms go up, it will go a little bit higher, as the arms come down, it will work down the spine a little bit. Just kind of like squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax. There's no perfect practice here, this is just starting to build some connection on Rekindle the connection you've got. Alright, let's get your elbows together. Really try to get that lid back squeeze going. Let the neck go. As the neck goes back, you get quite a bit more slack. We can access. Okay, into the lower back now. So you kind of want to forward fall like this and then really try to scoop the hips back and then you can kind of lift from there and just try to really use the lower back muscles as much and it will connect into the top of the glute there and you can go neutral to begin just trying to get this to curve as much as possible whatever helps you do that and then you can go a little bit side focus on one side and the other and from here it's really nice to come in and out of it so really Scoop the hips under and then scoop the hips back. Often you get, I used to have quite big judders like as I'd come in and out, the whole hips would judder and it's actually gotten better since doing this so it's, there's less juddering and I think that's a really good place to iron out if you do get judders as you come. Hips tuck, hips back, hips tuck, hips back. Just keep saying that so the belly towels are hands down, but I don't, I don't have any sugar hands down. But there you go. A little bit more, yeah. Yeah, then do it there, then work there, yeah. Okay. All right. Relax that. Give it a little shake out. A couple deep breaths in the nose. Let the dogs kind of ground forward just to like stretch it out. Okay. Once the glute max, you might want something for balance. You might not need it actually, but squeezing. I've just got on my left, but choose a glute. We'll just have some time to work around both. But squeezing a glute, you can do together if you want, if that helps you in the beginning. Squeezing both glutes. A few seconds on, relax. A few seconds on, and then you do pulses. Do one side at a time. When you do one side, you're always going to be able to get deeper then. When you do two together, the side. And for this, like, legs turn out, we don't need to know perfect thing, it's like, if you squeeze your glutes properly, it's going to pull your leg out. Ooh, 
We're like onto the glute med then. Out to glute. So just like pee and dog. Leg nice and relaxed. We're just trying to use that below the hip bone right here to hold the leg. Just kind of like exploring side, exploring back. It's just kind of a 45 degree range around here. We're going to do. And if you forward fold, it might help a little bit more, it might feel nice. Change sides, shake it out, change sides. Shift it out onto the hamstring. Then swap to my left side now, but we can do it. So for me, it's like an activation. We don't need to like flex it. We might do a little bit of that, but it's just like trying to recruit. When I actually squeeze my hamstring, it kind of straightens my leg, which I find weird. Like biomechanically, that's kind of the action. We just think of a muscle as like it's purely contraction, but I think we can cue it both ways. So. Just trying to light up the hamstring, whatever that is for you. And the more you do create this little arch, the more I think you'll be able to recruit it. It's definitely a lot harder to squeeze the hamstring there, right? So if you want to help it out, a bit of that, yeah. And you'll see, like, it might drive the heel back a bit as you go. And then do a couple of squeezes as well. So it might involve the calf as you do it. If you want to use the hands, you can, but the point is to get the muscle to do it. All right, swap sides. Couple squeezes. And also this for you. Once the pants are getting finally over the side there. Relax a bit. All right. Onto the thigh then, so you can shake the leg, squeeze the leg. Shake the leg, squeeze the leg. And then flex it, squeeze it. Yeah. And then if you notice, you can work around maybe a 120 degree angle, and it's gonna work different parts of the thigh, turn the angle. It's okay if the calf's involved a little bit too, but the focus is the thigh. It's just that squeeze on, 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 on. Again, that can be the knee extension as well. So you can serve the thigh and then put the knee extension on top. I'm knee extending in this. You can yeah. do it without, but no, I, like, I don't mind on the extension for that purpose. So just yeah. doing this thing. What well, you saying? If you don't extend, you can still squeeze it, right? Right. It's just fine. Yeah. 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 Back to the left, let's just do some with the toes pulled up this time. Just a few kind of fold into it, give it some slack to work with. You might be able to get a little bit deeper. Thank you. It feels good to stretch there. Like this is going to help relax the hamstring right when you're actually at the front. And so everything's going to relax. Swap sides. Okay, 
and I'll just put a few on the inner thigh. I'm going to pull across. So my legs relax. I'm not doing this, and I'm trying to activate the inner thigh muscle here. Name for it? Gracianus? No? Sartorius. Sartorius. Adult to measure, thank you. Adult to measure, yeah. Adult. Brutalis. Brutalis. Do something close to that. Well, actually, explore like knees close and then just slowly raise the knee and explore the fingers. And then swap sides, shake it out if you want to. So you're just trying to activate the inner thigh. Yeah. Like, this is one thing we never really explored. It's like, but we always like, if we pull the body in, we we'll use something to do it. It's like, no, use this muscle to do it. And we're like, oh, that's, I'll be able to get it done. Like, <laughs> you do that one too, yeah? Yeah, people want to do that. Feet on the ground, squeeze both at the same time. <sighs> yeah, this can go out, in, out. In, out, in. Okay. On to the calves then. Time to focus on the calves. Go behind. I think in front will feel better for me, but quads probably going to want to get involved. But try to focus mostly on the calves. You could point the toe if you want to do it that way. So just try and knead around the full 180 of the back of the calf as you go right. So. Explore what foot angle helps you do that. Swap sides. Just trying to run through these a little bit. So with each of these, there's like different series. This is the flex series, and you could you could do a full session just on this, or you could smoothly run through it and then move on to the next one. Cramping or? Yeah. Just want to get the full 180 at the back. No, don't really feel too much different there. Alright, onto Tibbs then. Ben Patrick style, you might want more to lean on. Do one at a time, just pulling the foot up. Quads probably want to be involved as well, but the focus is on. Shin muscle, pulling the foot up, and again exploring the angle. I'm going to focus on my big toe to knee, changes the angle. Focus on the little toe to knee, changes the angle again. So a lot of this, like when I really got into this, is like inspired by Matt Sick. He's like a 19, 1910, he wrote a book called Muscle Control, which is all about the foundation of strength, is mind-muscle connection, and he just practiced I can't remember what sickness he had, he was really sick as a child and his parents wouldn't let him lift any weights. He, he started to watch strong men and was inspired and wouldn't let him lift weights. So he would just stand in the mirror and just learn. Actually, I don't even know if they had a mirror at home, but he just learned to flex each muscle individually. And then when he did, when he was all 18 and he entered strongman competitions, he just beat everyone. He's a German guy. Um, and then when he was a little bit older, so he would do that as his foundation and then do the odd bit of strength. Lifting heavy weights was like, the expression of it, but his training was mostly this. And then he was, um, then he discovered, okay, not only focus on flexing the muscle, but try to relax every other muscle around it. And then he went the strength up to another level. So it was like, because often when we squeeze a muscle, five other muscles kick in and we're like, oh, can I actually relax the calf while I squeeze the quad? And it takes some practice, but that's what he kind of discovered. And he is one of the most legendary strong men. Strength to body weight ratio. I don't think there's many people that are he's like a go for strength to body weight ratio. Um, from purely mind muscle connection and building that as a foundation. Because you, you can only use your muscle for the mind, your mind can recruit it. And if your mind can't have a connection to it, you can't use it. So we're often focused on tools and lifting and stuff, but actually that, whether it's software, hardware, whatever you want to call it, internal is the foundation to that. So I, I think it's schools like, as we think of flexing as bodybuilder, showing off stuff, but actually there's a real skill to it that can be developed. Okay, so uh, final with just the feet. So just gonna squeeze little balls with the feet. In your own time, swap between sides so you don't want to cramp, so just find the edge. Yeah. 
Are you doing that boom boom boom? Yeah, I'm just gonna have to do it. From the outside edge? I Mist. just blah the edge. Roll, squeeze, mist. Yeah. Okay, let's check this one out. Okay, on to uh, rotating utilities now. So, start with the shoulder, start with the right shoulder. I'm going to do backward rotation, but I'm going to think about the muscle that pulls the shoulder into each position. So I'm not just idly swinging in, I'm going, you know, chest and, and front delt, delt, rear delt, lat. So I'm thinking about the muscle doing the work to move the shoulder. So yeah, so I'm cueing in a spiral of that action. No speed to it yet, which is nice. especially if you come up and you kind of cut around the back, trying to feel the whole delt make that wave action through the chest. And at the bottom, you can do some coiling to really connect the muscles to the box. It's almost like an exaggerated shoulder. Just to kind of like push tension into it, like yes, yeah. squeeze the muscle at that angle. Yeah, so whether it's the muscle pulls it first, or you're just putting it there and squeezing that. That's if you're good with that, that's fine. And you can slow it down to this speed. There you go. Change direction, so I'm going to reverse it. It's all right to be completely compartmentalized in this section to begin with. And then we start to see this. So this is on the same hand as like, okay, let's learn to flex the muscle and distort the muscle. And then we'll do some throwing lightly to see if this helps the throwing. I feel like it made a difference to my throwing. Rather than just like, like swing your arm, it's like, no, actually, like connect with what's making that happen. Right, and then we build up the speed. And we just kind of relax the arm and just a bit of a shake. And if you've got a pointy shoulder, squeeze your fist can help. And then do some backwards as well. Same thing again, go forwards, thinking about the muscle that's making it happen. Overhand action. And whether your arm wants to be straight, wants to be slightly bent, whatever feels good for you. Direction. The kid. So, yeah, breathe with it. Make sure you breathe in. We'll make sure we're still nourishing everything as we go. And then slowly winding it up to a bit more speed, straighter arm. Crank it, right? Feel it. <laughs> Shake it out. Yeah. Okay. Check them out. Of the elbows. For these, we can start a bit slow. But same thing again, like, I don't find it a lot harder to connect with what's doing it, but just start slow and try to think about something causing it to happen. We'll slowly build up. Two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let's change direction. Start slow. Wrist, same thing again, change the direction. Just think about the muscles in the forearm, making it spiral and turn as it feels right. Bit of both directions. 
Yeah, definitely. That's one thing I forgot to look and fill out the details on here. Like, I never see it. Starts to get nice and glitchy, starts to hit speed. You can tell me that glitch. I think it makes sense, you know, these are all rotational and the elbow's kind of in and out, so there's not much connection to that. Yeah, it does creak, I think it's only just like, so, so gently I suppose that you find it just before the creak, right? You're still going to feel it, but listen to that. Build up speed. In the other direction. Okay, check them out. Onto the hips then. Same thing. I'm going to go left. Find some support for this. You might want. I'm going to lift using kind of the stomach and the hip flexor. Glute med rotates it around. Hamstring and glute pull it on there, and then through. I'm going to go again. As I open, my legs are relaxed, right? So it gets pulled by the glute med. My legs are relaxed, pulled by the med, around. It's a nice sweeping action, like a ballet, someone conductor or something. Like I said, we're going through, sweep around, nice rotation. Yeah, high at the back as you can go. Through. One more, you can change direction. Change direction. Come around the back. This time we're going to squeeze extra long on the inner thigh just for an extra second and then through again. Yeah. So come around. The inner thigh squeeze with there. Squeeze through. Watch your nutsack to the boys. It's a bit of a tight squeeze. Yeah, and this isn't a fight about if you want to play balance, that's fine, but you might find you can focus more on the task if you need some support. Okay, change legs. Up, round the side, nice, keep it active, moving all the muscles around. Got the other side, but you can pick up the pace a little bit if you want now. Nice sweeping action, use the momentum. Hit both legs. Could do some on the other side, but yes. So you might find that this stuff helps you to have less creaks because you're actually engaging the muscles and not just along for the ride like they normally can be. Okay, onto the knees then. Imagine you're a skillful footballer, point your rotations, change the pace, do some slow, some fast, yeah, do it, hips involved, yeah, do it, change direction, some slow, some fast, how, how smooth is that circle, the coordinator are you? Change leg, in to out, faster, left's a bit, a little less coordinated than the right, change direction. Speed up a bit. Okay, 
shake them out. Here's the ankles. Again, you know, 20 is a good number, but you can start slow. Build up the pace, 20 into the calf, tips to help the ankle move and the foot muscles, okay? Build the pace. And then right the leg is your first thrust. <laughs> Make you think about that, that guy. <laughs> Throw your mind somewhere else. What was the third one? Right, change leg. Nice rotations in the muscle. Change direction. Speed up. Right, the first street you grew up on, you remember it? Or the street you live on now? I'm going to get all your security questions now, but at least let <laughs> Yeah, review the footage where as long as those two come up then I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> well there's many more. Right, okay. Right, okay. Um, okay, to finish off then on the just kind of swing uh, rotation series, we're gonna do some swings, some leg swings. So we're gonna go front, back. You might want a wall for this. I would probably recommend also some sort of balance support. But we're gonna squeeze the hamstring, squeeze the quad. Squeeze the hamstring, squeeze the quad. Now you have to raise up the that. And then build up, the, build up the speed slowly and just try and, try and stay long in the body. We're not trying to like compress, we're trying to stay nice and long. Reach back, reach forward. Allow the calf to bounce as it comes. Rhythm to it. So it's like spine. Like trying to make a nice long circle, a curve, and then fold it front and change sides. So, quad, hamstring and glute, quad, hamstring and glute, last, even third and slide. And I really like this. It's a natural balance that the calf wants to do with this. So it's really good here. You can play with either theory as well. I can do a throw in. Swing the finish. That's it. Let's swing it out. Okay, shake them out. Right, onto the, the spine series. I'm going to work down the spine a little bit, standing, and then do some. Yeah, we'll be doing this is standing for now. So, actually, starting with the neck, top of the spine. Gonna do some squeezes at the back. Just some, allow the chin to lift up. Just allow it to squeeze a bit. And then at the front as well. So we're gonna go back and front, but we're not just like idly swinging it. We're compressing when we're there. What's this muscle here called? Uh, Sternocleidal muscle. Sternocleidal muscle, yeah. yeah. That's it. And as we're doing that, we'll, Find the 45s as well, right? Body's not just front and back, there's 45s for everything, so you can explore the 45s. Obviously, there's a full circle, but 45s help give you that. Then we do some uh, turns side to side. Take a second there, squeeze the muscle that holds it there. Squeeze the muscle that pulls it there. And do a pulse when you get it as well, actually. Pulse, pulse. Right, pulse. Left, pulse. Right, pulse. And do it tight together. We'll go right, left, right, pulse. Left, right, left, pulse. Right, left, right, pulse. Left, right, left, pulse. Uh, ear to shoulder, but we're not 
squeeze them in the forward, don't get your shoulder want to lift up to the ear, that's fine, you're not trying to fight in a perfect form, but just nourishing the area with some compression, some contractions and some contractions. Keep both sides, squeeze the angles. And then just gentle rotations, whatever feels good. Figure eights. Okay. Onto some spinal waves. Just if you've done it before, you might feel better. If you're not, just join in. Just follow what you can. It's a good bit of segmentation of the spine. So you're going to do some, uh, I won't do it like either with the wall, but just you're going to stick your chest out, like chin out, chest out, belly button out, hips out. And I'm just going to repeat that a few times. So we're going spinal wave this way around. So chin, chest, belly button, hips. Trying to make it as smooth as possible. Body waving. Breathe with it. Make sure we're breathing as well nicely. And then we're going to reverse that. So we're going to come from the bottom, hips, belly button. If you Done the other way, then just swap the direction. Hips, belly button, chest, neck, forehead. And then while we're doing this, let's just explore a bit of angles as well. So it's not just neutral. Turn the ribs open up to the side, wherever it feels good. Play with the tempo. Do some on both directions. Okay. I'll rest from that. We're going to do some forehead to knees. Now the goal here is not to pull with your hands. You can get forehead to the knee. Using your stomach and your thigh. But you can use your hands for a bit of support. We're not pulling, but you can just help guide it a little bit if that helps. But the, the contractions coming from the stomach is <laughs> or nose to knee if it's too stiff for your neck, nose to chin is fine. We're just trying to create this like short side compression on the front. <clears throat> on the exhale, no, it's on the exhale, that's the <clears throat> I know it's the rock climbing, screaming really does help, and it's good lifting as well, right? But how much, if I do let scream out, I can hold, I can make that grab. Screaming does it Yeah, it helps, yeah. <clears throat> that, that exhale engages the core. That's the first step, picking your power screaming. Oh, what? Power screaming? That's the first step, picking your power screaming. Picking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, now just some really chill Jefferson curls, slowly rolling down from the top of the spine to the floor. To the, Bottom to the floor, I don't mind if the legs are locked or bent, do a bit of both, I say, and then really slowly coming up, stacking the vertebrae as close to one at a time as possible, tucking the hips, rolling up so you're at the top and then back down, same way you reversed. Some nice Jefferson girls. Put a bit of angle on them as well. Maybe do one leaning slightly to the left. Join in through the left heel, lift you up. And then obviously next one on the right side. From there, come upright, do some nice side bends, reaching down the thighs. <laughs> Not forcing anything, just what feels good, breathing into it, finding the angle that feels nice. Okay, on to some good mornings now. The, like the Jefferson curl, but this time the spine's going to stay straight. I'm going to go flat back, 
reach, if it's the floor, if it's your hands on your knees, that's fine. Where you get to it and then just reverse it back up. Kind of trying to use the hamstrings to control you each way. Hit the floor, wherever's comfortable for you without forcing anything. You can do some with the legs locked, do some with the legs slightly bent. Just a few nice good flat back good mornings. We're going to do some one leg focus, so kind of split the legs, split stance. Some, what are these, my leg in the Not on the elbow. Loose foot, yeah. Two or three. Two or three. This work feels nice for your body this morning. Stick in the breath if you want to. Okay, five minutes straddle. Just forward fold here. Make a nice stretch if you want. As well as combining some expiration and some good mornings. on some windmills from here. So you're just gonna have one hand down, one hand up, and just stand up. And then slowly, you're gonna work the feet together. So do like one each side, or do a couple on one side, point the feet in a little bit. Whatever feels okay for your body. But we just wanna get, get the QLs nice and weight straight. Hard to activate the QL, so not really move because it's just a move to do it. This is one I really find you'll do it. So trying to keep the hand, I kind of look at the hand. Imagine you're holding a big weight in that one hand. So that's those that don't sure. Standing and holding a big weight here. My other hand's gonna go down my leg. I'm gonna stick my butt back and keep my eye on the top, find the floor, and then trying to come back up thinking like that that X that outside loop. QL's gonna lift me up, that's gonna be the the motion. Get me up there. Okay. Right, shake that one out. Have a couple drinks real quick if people want. It's nice warm work. How long are we out in the video? Fifty nine, wow, okay, cool. All right. Wow, get through it. All right, squat theory. On the squat, go back to your knees. You want a, a slab board, a slab board, bow to uh, wet steps. Uh, but we're just basically just trying to do squats, build up, um, and just pumping. Yeah, find the floor with your hands, stand up. And gentle. Yeah. Do some terminated squats, so B stance, as I said before, a bit split. Just focus on that one leg. Think, try and think about like keeping the hip under your torso as you lift up, so we're coming nice strong leg as we go. On your leg. So the point here is we're not trying to go to a burnout. We're not trying to be trying to get warm and flush through all these movements that we're going to use throughout the day, but we'll be doing you for the body more. So just some on those legs, some kind of splits, split points, squats. Then we make a bit of a lunge, so choose a leg, we're gonna go right leg back, like we did yesterday, and slide it up. The toilet, if you want to toilet, access the toilet. 
And then there's two versions I want to play with. There's the pistol squat version, like where I'm driving with a thigh. And then there's the hinge version, where I go down, lift the butt, pull through. You swap legs as well, give them three leads. So then go slide back, squat, almost a pistol squat with a bit of assistance, coiling if you want, and then the hinge version where you're like a runner on the block, ready to go loading the back chain, loading the hamstring, and then you're ready, go, ready. Okay, now let's squat. Okay, we've got knee problems, which is great on the slant board. I'm just going to spend a bit of time at the bottom of the squat. Heel raise is fine. I'm just going to pull on the knees so you can get some good compression on the back of the calves. And allow that to do this, you can see the knees to be rekindled. And you want to explore driving the knees forward, make some tighter angles. Do some more if you want. Do a bit side to side, kind of go from one knee at a time. It's nice, gently bouncing to the joint, not causing anything. From here, I'm going to do some waves, some squat waves. So I'm going to go knees forward, drive down and up, so almost like a sissy. And then I'm going to go pop back, down into the squat, knees forward, hips under, nice and tall. Just find your limit of that. Foot back, squat, knees through, up. Some squat waves. Nice and controlled, yeah. Spine, nice exaggerated spine wave. One more that direction. And then we'll change direction, so reverse. This time going into more of a sissy at the front. Not trying to chase the floor though. Just trying to chase control. Foot up, nice little stripper chance. Hips forward, <laughs> hips forward, lower is comfortable, find the transition, weight back. Nice, all right, rest there. Final one for you to do here. We're just going to bounce on the car, so you want to lean into something. And you're just going to like keep the balls on the floor, don't let them come up a bit, just get some nice bounce going. Like, yeah, reflexive, like. And pulse into it if you want, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just kind of that neutral angle. Then we're going to do some really trying to straighten the feet now, so at a high angle. So even if you ball straight on the floor, that's fine, but just trying to bounce and squeeze the calves, keep the heels as high from the floor as possible. That's it, and then we're going to go for some low ones. So the knees slightly bent, feet bent. Bouncing at the bottom angle. You might want to come away from the angle of the wall here. You can go side on for this one. So I'm not really trying to pull the toes up to my knees. Knees slightly bent and bouncing at that bottom angle. You see? Okay, check that out. That stuff you can really work into and do like longer sets of like. Bounce, bounce, you can explore like one leg of stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go into the floor series now. So we're gonna go to the floor. If you feel like you want a mat, take a mat. And on our back first, yep, two climbs. First action, we're gonna try and make, just slide down like, 
and it might look like I'm going to rip all the zip. Um, so we're going to try and create as big an arch as we can in the back. So we're going to squeeze the lower back and the upper back. Try and make the atlas bone and coccyx meet by arching the back. So think about each segment at a time. Think about the lower back contracting. Think about the middle of the back contracting. Think about the upper back contracting. One nice big squeeze, nice and curved. And then do a little bit of an angle on each side. So pull the left hip to the left shoulder at the back. The right hip to the right shoulder. Just curving up and on the other. Kind of stick your rib cage to the ceiling by squeezing your back, contracting your back. And I'm going to reverse this, relax out. Forehead to knee, using your stomach muscles. So, squeeze your stomach, exhale. Do a few on each side, chain side. From here, we're going to go to um, shoot the bridge right at the top of the Go sit up, bridge control, lower down, and then slowly, if you can do it without any bar, do it. I can't do it, I'm just about the end of it there. But really, one segment at a time, control it now, fight for it, so there's no sudden jumps. Down, and then up, with as little momentum as possible. Just a tiny bit. Control, fight for it, hold up. That's it. And then up. <laughs> From here, we're going to do Tibetan uh, right number two. So, on your back, your hands are going to go like either by your hips or below your butt. And we're just going to do some leg lifts. The head comes up, we don't squeeze the stomach, but the head comes up and then we're down. Heels can touch, up, and then exhale on the way down. Good time, reverse, inhale the way up, exhale on the way down, inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, inhale up and then hold it, exhale, inhale down, we reverse it now, inhale down, exhale. Inhale down, exhale up, inhale down, exhale up, one more, inhale down, exhale up, all right, come out of that, um, keep the spine a bit on the back, I'm going to do a bit of a neck stand, but optional for half of the field, but just some side kind of stretch, just letting the legs come overhead, explore a little bit here, you can go up, you can break the next one if you want, or just hang out, give that upper back a nice stretch. Let the legs come over. Nice. Okay. Come out of that onto our front. We'll do some. Spine segmenting now. So, for this, I'm trying to separate my spine into three sections lower back, middle of the back, and then like upper back. There's obviously more than that, but just a bit of isolation. So, in the beginning, I'm just going to try and squeeze my lower back, but relax everything else. So, it's going to lower back, relax the lower back. Thinking about, I'm going to squeeze my lower back, my neck relaxed. My shoulders and upper back relax. Middle of the back relax, but my lower back's on. So in and out. And then I'm going to go up from there. So relax the lower back. Try to squeeze the middle of the back. I don't know if the most segmenting me, but the intention's there. But my upper back's relaxed, my neck's relaxed. But, and my lower back's relaxed. But it's just lifting me, like kind of onto the tips of my ribs here. Because the middle of my back is contracting and relax that squeeze that try to isolate so is my lower back on tight can i relax that 
is my upper back. I'm kind of like stuck. Just come in and out of that a few times. And then for the upper back, so I'm gonna try and relax the middle back. I'm trying to activate kind of just below my neck, between my scapulas. I'm gonna kind of pull my neck up a bit, but it's not a compression on the neck. It's just like an upper back contraction. So lower back relax, middle back relax. And then relax that and, and come back into it. So just trying to isolate the three separate sections. In and out. And then once you've done that a few times, we're going to go lower back on, lower back off, middle back on, middle back off, upper back on, upper back. And you know, it's not going to be perfect, this is just experimenting with this for the first time, but something to explore at home to kind of control my back in isolation like this. Again, middle and uh, lower back on. Lower back relax and the glutes should kind of slightly might help to lightly engage the glutes and the hips should tuck under when the lower back's relaxed, the hips should be slightly tucked. Middle of the back, on, oh, it pulls your it pulls your chest up, but not the neck's not compressing, and then relax that, and then upper back. So my ribs should stay flat on the floor when I, and then when I lift on the upper back, so I lift my neck but not compress my neck. Okay. Relax that, shake the spine a bit. From here, we're just going to pop up into Sphinx. Just do a few looks over the shoulder, nice and gently at your heels. Anyone know Original Strength on YouTube? Tim Olsen, I think his name is. He's a really good YouTuber, I like the movie. One of the few that I really rate. He'd love, he's got such a long neck because he always does it. It's all about neck stuff, and he's always like doing this kind of stuff. Just nice long neck, look at you. Try and look at your heel, same side heel or opposite side heel. There's so much fashion running through the neck that if you can loosen the neck up, it can relax more of the body. Okay. From here, we're just going to do a few uh, kneeling push ups. We want a bit of a pump, but we're not going to burn out. So, on your knees, just a bit of a pump. Think about the muscles that are making it happen triceps, the chest, the back. Inhale with it, exhale with it. Do some expiration, pull some, put some angles on it. Do some wide if you want. Do some long if you want. Do some coiled. You don't need great intensity to get muscles working. You've got a bit of a pump, a couple more reps. Check it out. And then a few side planks down. Stick with this. Um, I'll do it this way. I'm going to get some knees if you need knees or feet. It's going to be here. I'm going to overlap the forearms. Well, just some side to side. Well, just passing through that, opening up. some wild things now. Feels really good. I can start maybe pulling into it. It's a really good shoulder exercise. Is you're on one hand, completely collapsing your shoulder, and then you just want to how do you do this? Try and get the nipple as far away from the elbow as you possibly can. So it'll like corkscrew in and down when the hips lift, and then you relax into it again. So as the nipple drives away from the elbow, you should feel the shoulder nice rotate the screw down. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we're relaxed on the shoulders. Shoulders up to here, kind of relax, like on the bone. And then rise the shoulder. Also another cue could be shoulder away from the ear. So shoulder width up there. Change hands. So relax into the shoulder. Drive the shoulder down and hips up. Shoulder down, hips up. And then we're just going to pass this wild thing for a few seconds on the first side again. So you're up, and then whatever feels good with your feet, pass them fully open, the chest up to the sky. Whatever feels good there. If you're okay, if you're busy, don't encourage. Just a little. Alternate sides as your right heart comes through the middle and you're up, you form, rotate back through the middle. Lovely little flow there. Boom. And really try to pull the shoulder in to the spine at the back. It's going to give it as much support and comfort as possible. Okay. Right. From here, um, We'll go into Tibetans, three, four, and five. Uh, let's do, let's just do four, five. Okay, let's just do four, five. So, you're gonna be hands by your bum, heels, toes lifted, and you're gonna come up, boom. Inhale, exhale. Yeah, if you need, hands on blocks, go for that, knuckles maybe, but try as much as you can. Even if you slide your bum on the floor, that's fine. It's just to get the maximum lift, both shoulders back. Head back. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. I'm kidding. Face over. Expect number five. Up dog, down dog. Do ten reps through your own pace on your toes. Let you go. Exhale. Up. That's the way they do it. Inhale down. Oh, wrong around. Yeah. Okay. All right. Take a breather. Last couple series now. This one's a stand-up series. Grab a quick swig of water if you want one. And then have a quick swig. Just okay. Three different ways to stand up from the ground. We'll start with a cross-legged lunge. So you're sitting cross-legged. If you need cushion, go for it. And whichever foot you have at the front, you're going to step forward and then roll over. Yep. And then reverse the same when you went in. Back down. Lunge back. Roll over. Really gracefully. So same leg. We'll go same again. Reach forward. Nice and graceful and controlled. Gentle on the joints. Up. Right. Stand up. Half way into your knees. Reverse it back down. One more time, same side. Forward. Walk over, nice and controlled. Stand up. Stand up. This time, maybe back the opposite leg. Control. Nice and graceful. Little bit of a Sit. Control. Sit. 
looking at Trevor Bauer. Oh. Yeah. To me, it's handy to be handy, but the point will be to get it to the point where you can just control without an hand, left, left, left side. So, most of that guy sitting cross legged. Okay, that's one. We're getting up. Number two, pull this uh, baby up, it's going to straddle. The baby is that left thing, the whatever, it's all right. I'm going to put left leg, right hand, kind of like Turkish get up, so opposite hand. We're going to pop that left leg up, put the foot by the hand, and then we're going to get a hinge up, step in. Hip, step back. I'm going to do a cool break dance underneath. Back hand, uh, right hand, right foot. Sweep the right foot through. Sit. One more time, same side. Nice and graceful. Control. Up. Again, back. Same leg. Down. Through. Yes. Everyone get that? So, last time on the same side. So, left foot, right hand. Lift, try and just have a pause over here. Now try and sweep through, lift the foot, but don't put it down yet. Then put it down. And then hinge and lower. Now we're going to step back onto the leg. Hand goes back to meet the back foot. Foot comes through. Sitting. Right foot, left hand. This time it's just loop. Reverse it back down. Nice and smooth control through. Yeah, this time, eyes on the horizon. You're a mere cat or there's something inside of you. You've got to keep your eyes on this. Right on the soul. Yeah, just explore that this time on both sides. So just feel, explore your own grace, your own control. What that is to you. Silently if you can. Don't leave. Use whatever challenge and leave as you want to balance. Okay. One more time. Same side of this. Back to the floor. Okay, that's kind of two ways of getting up. Both kind of this way. Third one. <coughs> kind of a burpee. We won't do the press as part. Stay on your belly. That ability to use the balance of the body. So if you feel comfortable to do that, third way you're just going to go here, try and bounce, up, hinge up. Oof. Just bounce that at the time, yeah, better. Oof. Yeah. Try to find that toe in the spine and then let boom. Get that down. Yeah, feel like it's too flat. All right, we're gonna do a few reps now. This time we're gonna lie on the floor. You're gonna lie on your belly, stealthy asleep, and then really controlled hands. What's that? A little bit of elevation, like a cat, like he's ready to go. Boom. Whatever makes you bounce off. Yeah. Back to the belly, sleep. You wait. Like, like last time. Belly, trying to sleep. What's that noise? You wait. Oh, and you're right. Nice one. Good, Good little pump. <laughs> okay. Roll series. We'll skip. We maybe go to the grass later. Doing teddy bear rolls and all sorts. I don't think we've got space. For teddy bear rolls. Um, so then, closing postures. Last three postures. The body straight series. Headstand, so whatever you need, cushions, mat for headstand, use your forearm on the wall. Just gonna do 30, 45 seconds of headstand. Nice straight body. With the headstand, you can, you know, some people might be able to do forearm. The key really for me that I only know when I was older is like to put it on your crown, more on your crown of your head. So I was always doing this as a kid. But you want to like put your eyes through the back of the head. So yeah, you want to go up in your own time. And then not just compress on the middle, even though it feels flatter. Try and drive through the crown of the head. 
I'm just because I'm on concrete, I'm going to pop to that. But you can use a wall, and we just want to contract the glutes and the stomach a little bit to get this nice, straight, long, stiff action in the whole body. So feel free to join me. Those? No? No one wants to do hands Breathing through the nose, and now exhale. Nice deep ocean breath. As long as you're comfortable with. <laughs> Let the blood flow out your legs. <laughs> This put the on if you want. Just gonna line up back for four minutes. Got three options for the final Sabasta. Well, a few options, but if you wanna have your feet up, that's fine. But so don't have bolsters, but if your feet are on the bend or across your legs, or legs straight. Just try to tuck the hips a little bit so your lower back's not stressing out. You can have the hands nice, relaxed, open, traditional Sabasana by your side. Hands might feel nicer up in kind of starfish. Or well, there's the GGP, lock the fingers, back of the head, ultimate clutch right there. Yeah, if that feels okay for you. Just gonna relax here, relax the breathing. Relax the face. 
Relax your jaw, relax your cheeks. Relax your eyes and your forehead. Relax your ear, your right ear, your left ear. Relax your neck. Upper back. Relax your traps. Relax your shoulders. Relax your right bicep, tricep, your right forearm. Relax your right hand. Relax your left shoulder, your left bicep, your left tricep. Relax your left forearm. Relax the left hand. Exhale and relax your chest. Relax the back of your ribs. Inhale gently. Exhale and relax your stomach. Relax your hips. Relax your glutes. Relax your thighs. Relax your hamstrings. Relax your right foot. And your right calf. Relax your right kneecap. Relax your left foot and your left calf and your left knee can. Quietly and gently inhale. Relax your whole body into the ground. <laughs> 